So, welcome. This is going to be a very unique video. All these boxes you see behind me is pretty much my childhood video game collection. We started out with the Commodore. Can't even find a Commodore game in here. Went through Nintendo. Pretty much have all the original boxes games. Who knows, uh, who knows what we might find. We got uh, Master System games. All the PlayStation demos from that magazine. Classic Demo 1. We have uh, all kinds of stuff in here. Atari, PlayStation, Donkey Kong, Commodore 64 Music Maker. You remember that? That was good, wasn't it? Uh, over here, let's take a look. So what we're going to do in this video is going to be a bit different than we normally do. We're just going to go through all these boxes. This stuff has been boxed up for years, absolutely years. I haven't touched it, it's just been perfectly preserved like everything else I own. I even have a, uh, a Windows 90, no, XP machine down there. It's, it's re yeah, really random, uh, but all of these have been in boxes for at least 12 years, some of them even longer. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through everything. Oh, there's a Commodore 64 action replay. Look at that. So yeah, some of this stuff has been in here for at least 12 years. Some of it even longer. I've collected it pretty much my whole life. I've bought and sold stuff, but generally I'm a collector. Not, not in the way I need to get everything, but if I see something for one pound, I'm going to buy it. So all of this stuff pretty much came from car boots. Oh, look at that. From car boot sales, um, things like that. It was the time when uh, no one cared about video games. I'd go to like a thrift store, charity shop, car boot, and uh, I'd see this, for example. It was uh, 50p, 10p. And people would be like, what do you, what do you want to do with that? You know, why do you want it? And I'm like, well, I mean, I know no one cares, but uh, I want it for 50p. I can't leave it for 50p, you know? But at the time, you have to remember, uh, no one gave a crap. Um, if you want to buy some Nintendo games at a car boot, they'd be like, no, I want to sell it all together. So it's like, oh, okay, how much is the Genesis and the five games? And they'd be like two pounds, which is like three dollars. And you'd be like, oh, okay, I guess I could have, a, you know, Genesis number 12, for example, Mega Drive number 12. So this is how this happened. Everything here, um, apart from the consoles on release, like the PS1, PS2, etc., um, everything was second-hand, pre-owned, used. I never bought anything new. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do today. And it's not only these uh, six huge boxes here. <laughs> I have uh, yeah more stuff. An older RGB monitor here. I think that might be an Xbox, I don't know, PS2. I've got uh, more boxes up here. Some uh, really old dance mats, uh, things like that. And uh, yeah, more. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more boxes boxes everywhere so um yeah we're gonna go through it all and uh yeah go from there really there's not really a plan but um i'm seeing some of this stuff for the f what's gonna seem like the first time because i just forget what i own you know this is ridiculous but um this is all gonna be for sale i'm gonna throw it all on ebay very slowly over time a lot of it is pal region but um it is what it is. But with technology these days, uh, maybe if you live in the US or wherever, then um, I'm sure there's a way you can play it if, if, you, if, you, if you care. But um, yeah, we're going to see what rarities are in here. And uh, yeah, we're going to start with uh, box number one. Let's go. Right, box number one. Let's have a look. Look at that. Pokemon Blue. That's probably worth about 150 quid right there. Let's, uh, let's set that one out, uh, out of the way. <laughs> What else? I, I don't even know what's in here. Oh, it's uh, Swap Magic for the uh, PS2. So you can play your copied games. Alright, that's pretty useful. What else? Uh, oh, Spectrum. Look, Roland's Rat Race. Ah, oh, do you remember this? For, for the new people out there? Yes, we used to have games on cassette. Look at that. It's alright, isn't it? Ah, oh, good old Spectrum. That means the Spectrum's hiding in here somewhere. Uh, we got some PS1 games here, Daniel Martin Bike, Busted Groove, Hydro Thunder. These must be all my unboxed ones. Uh, people would sell these at the car boot sales for, you know, like 10p. They'd have no box or anything like that. Destruction Derby, that was a great game, wasn't it? 
Uh, yeah, okay, so it looks like some unboxed uh, PS1 games. What is this? <laughs> so, um, I was one of those people in the early 2000s who had one of the first uh, CD writers. Maybe it was late night, as I can't remember. Um, it was a Rico DV, uh, not DVD, CD burner. It cost me £120, and it wrote discs at two speed. Two speed! <laughs> Considering now, you know, the standard read speeds in the 50s. Oh, these look like DVDs, so this is a, a bit later. Yeah, so I was one of those people that had all those lists of games, and, um, you know, if you remember the times when the PS1 came out, and maybe the PS2 as well, you always knew a guy with a list. He'd give you his big list, and then you could buy his games for £5 each. And he'd probably do you a deal if you wanted three or five or something like that. So there I am. You know, each CD takes 30 minutes to burn. Uh, a fiver each time. <laughs> this looks like music. That's just music. Who cares about music? What's that? Oh, Zelda Minish Cap. I didn't really like that one that much. Uh, Shrek. That was definitely 5p at the car boot. I remember buying that. <laughs> Uh, Zelda 2. Oh, it's the classic edition. Oh, good old Mario and Duck Hunt. I wonder how many of those we have. Oh, these games. Oh. Now, um, if you're not familiar with uh, Commodore and uh, games of that era, Thalamus, one of the best video game creators pretty much ever. They'd make these insane games like Creatures 1 and 2 and uh, Summer Camp as well. It's just amazing what they did with the memory and uh, hardware requirements at the time. And um, these, yeah, still got all the instructions and everything. But these, I, I think we spent about maybe 8 or £10 pounds, uh, on them. At the time, you know, this was um, early 90s. Would it be 91, 93, something like that? But, um... Oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna hurt to get rid of these I think. <laughs> oh you can see the price. Nine ninety nine. That's when uh, boots used to sell video games, you know the uh chemist, the pharmacy. Crystal Kingdom Dizzy, one of the easiest dizzies. Uh I think the first one to have passwords in. Uh Turtles on the Spectrum. Look, yeah, you can buy it from Boots, look. It's cool, isn't it? And if you you get a free gift, look. It's alright, isn't it? Wow, a lot of history. Oh, a random uh, Sega Sega Mega Drive too. Just just chilling out there. Uh, what? I, oh, I got some Sega Saturn in here. Uh, PS2 DualShock. Um, Blink 182. Okay, definitely CDs. That's an Iron Maiden album. Uh, we don't care about that right now. Um, oh, all Doom. Oh, I used to be part of a um. A Dreamcast Doom modding scene on the internet a long time ago, time of the dial-up internet, and we used to uh, port Doom to the Dreamcast and uh, yeah, play all the uh, wads. Wow, that was a long time ago. Uh, so that's what that is. That's probably more music. Um, oh wow, that's kind of new that one. Well, newish. I guess it's old now. Uh, N64 controller, just chilling. Uh, what is that? Oh, Sony Walkman, look at that! Yeah! Alright, what else? Well, you know what, I don't think I ever owned a PS3. That's kind of when I stopped really playing. I had a PS2, but I got it really late, and it was kind of reluctant. But it was only so cheap that I... Ah, oh, Broken Sword 2. Hey look, Oscillator X album. Uh, Cause Urban Comatose. And another Oscillator X album. What the hell? Uh, these are the guys that made some music for um, in the in the groove, but I knew the guy from France. He was the official distributor, and uh, yeah, he got me a, a limited edition signed copy. Wow! I gotta get rid of that. What else is in here? Oh, you remember these guys? You used to buy them in the hundred. So at the start, you'd get a pack of ten of these. They'd be ten pounds for ten CDs, and they'd all come with the dual cases. But if you ever got a failed burn, you know, when you're writing at two speed, four speed, and you got a failed burn, each failed burn would cost you a pound. And it was so annoying, especially when you're so young and ten pounds was a lot of money. You know, that was a, that was a big deal. But eventually, around 2004, 2003, they started making these huge spindles. And then, you know, then they were dirt cheap from there. But, uh, yeah, I think this is probably 2003 era, that...
that big spindle there. What else? Huh? Oh, I, I think one of the best games in, in the world. Oh, I love that game. Number three. Really good. Uh, what else? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Couple game cubes, pal. Power region game cubes. Uh, I think they were 50 pence each at the car boot from Quan Car Boot. That one. Oh, that one was two pounds. Look, that one was two pounds. One of them was 50p. I remember giving the guy 50p because I couldn't believe it. But remember, at the time, no one cared. No one gave a crap. It's like when you go and buy a fidget spinner right now. It's done. No one cares about fidget spinners ever anymore. And that's when I bought most of this stuff. Uh, fighting Vipers on the Saturn. Oh. What else? Let's burn through these Saturn games. Scorcher. Crypt Killer. Oh, I do remember. Oh, look at that. Knights. Whoa, we got, we got Knights into Dreams and Crypt Killer. Uh, those two, I think they're pretty valuable. I don't really keep up much with it anymore, but uh, I think those two are pretty good. Yeah, so you'll see um, there's probably some soccer games because there were 10p or something like that. This was when they stopped buying Saturn games in because uh, some of the shops like GameStation and things, if you had sports games, they just wouldn't buy them anymore. So they had to sell what stock they had. And yeah, 10p. I I'm, I'm sure they were around 10p because um, I bought Onside Soccer for the PS1 for 10p from CEX. And my friends were laughing at me. I'm like, what? But maybe they're worth a pound now, I don't know. Uh, the Gold Connection. Oh, look at that. So this is a, a compilation set up for the uh, Commodore. They used to put more than one game, and you get these mega boxes, which you're going to see in a minute. And, uh, yeah, you'd get two or three cassettes. Oh, sadly, I'm missing one. But, uh, yeah, some of them would work with the Commodore 28, 128 as well. Um, that system wasn't successful as the 64, just because it wasn't really worth the price upgrade. And some games didn't even work on it. We we had a Commodore 128 at home, but um, you can't beat the C64. Now, these Dizzy collections here on the C64, this is, one again, along with the Creatures, one of the best games on the C64. These are family packs, would have uh, five games in, and the other five would be on the other one right there. And uh, inside you get like a little ziplock look with all the games in. Uh, there'd be one on each side of the cassette sometimes. And you get a poster, instructions, all this cool stuff. Um, I was super surprised because I don't really keep up with newer consoles, but someone told me that they bought a, a Switch game and it doesn't even have an instruction manual anymore. Yeah, that's crazy. But the best part was having the poster and everything like that. You know, it's weird. Oh, check this out. Look, Pro Action Replay. No, this has got to be pretty rare. Let's, let's, let's take a look here. Oh, look at that. What even is that for? Is that is that the Mega Drive? You know, I think that's the Mega Drive. It looks a bit Super Nintendo-y. 16-bit. Oh, yeah, it has to be, yeah. It's probably the Genesis, the Mega Drive. Uh, what else? Look at this! So this is an early action replay for the uh, Commodore 64 and 128. Works with any disk drive. Look at that freeze frame. It allowed you to um, I, I pretty much just tap into any game. Look, it's got the instructions still. The action replay. Look at that freeze frame. You just go boop then I think you can get into the game. Pretty much, uh, I imagine the game freezes and you can access the memory and change things around. You know, like a hex editor, I guess. What is that? Extended Basic? Oh, that's where you can learn programming languages and write your own games, which is really common back then, you know. Um, now you own a console, you just play the games, you're a bit of a puppet, you know. But back then, um, if you owned the computer, you, a lot of people were developers. They got into it, you know, learn basic, write your own games. Uh, but that doesn't really seem to be a thing anymore. Same with owning a car, you know. Um, um, people just get in the car. If there's a problem, they take it to someone, they fix it. Oh, banjo kazooie. But now, um, yeah, um, but back then, you know, people would do valve adjustments on their own car, you know. It was... It's just weird what people learn and don't learn anymore with today's society. Super Nintendo Action Replay. 
So the same kind of thing as the one I showed you on the Genesis, but th this one you can put games on the top of it, and that goes in your Super Nintendo. And then you can look up the um, the codes online and things like that. Uh, oh my god, what is this? Oh look, Scrabble for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Now, you didn't really see many of these over the pond. Uh, they were mostly like a British uh, thing. You saw some, but um, when they cleared out all the old stock, when no one really wanted it anymore, a lot of those actually got shipped to uh, South America when they had a clear out. Uh, this one, look, Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Make a chip. Look, make your own chips. Program your own chips. Program your own ICs. It's cool, isn't it? What else is in here? Oh, another one. Oh, there's some nerdy stuff in here. I apologize. <laughs> so I'm one of those people where I play the games, but I want to learn, you know? I want to I wanna do some stuff. I want to make a difference. So, um, yeah. So that's why I've got a lot of this stuff here. Uh, what else is in here? What the hell is this? Oh, that's some photos from a zip line that I did in uh, Mexico. It's kind of random, isn't it? I don't know why that's even in there. What's this? Mystery. Mystery. We like mysteries. My graduation on DVD. No, we don't We don't need that. What else? Oh, look at that. In the groove. Signed. Who's it signed by? I don't even remember this. Apparently, apparently someone signed it. In the groove one. Is that on the PC? Jeez, my memory is horrible. Oh, look, you can use my product key. There you go, print screen. <laughs> look, and you can use it with a, a red octane soft mat. I think, didn't they have a little agreement with them at one point? I don't even remember. Full Madness 2004. Shout outs to uh, Bacon, Kent Fund, who put this together. Some videos from a DDR tournament back in, back in 2004. Wow. Uh, I wasn't one of those that uh, ruined my life by this game, but I do have a lot of friends that left uh, university because they got too addicted. That was back in 2003, I remember that. And this I bought, but I never actually played. Never used the key, nothing. Um, I think it was a bit of a, a life decision at that time. This is New and Sealed Ocean, who also made great games for uh, the Commodore and various other things. Yeah, this is still sealed, factory sealed. It's weird. Um, oh, Arkanoid, look. Frankie Good. Oh, that is a good game. Oh, Cobra. Yeah, well, I don't know where that came from. You know, one point, when we got Poundland here in 2003, it was only up in Yorkshire in Huddersfield, they sold some uh, new old stock there for a couple years. I think it, that one might have come from there. That's why it's still sealed. Oh, look at this, Dragon's Lair. Wow, what what console is it? Oh, uh, it's a disc for the C64 and 128. Oh, look at that with the instructions and pictures. Yes. We need to put that one to the side. What else? TTDS. Oh, yeah, so when we all got uh, Nintendo DSs, um... This is how you put custom games on there. You put the cartridge in, slip an SD card in there. I guess it's history now, but yeah, this is one of the first ones. So I remember that. And what is this? Uh, shoot 'em up construction kit. Ooh. For the oh C64. Oh, I remember. You can make your own shoot 'em up games. Okay, yeah. V vague, vague, distant memory of this one. Yeah, look, you get all your manuals. Oh, well, I got a bit of foxing on there. But, uh, yeah, that was a good one. What else we got in here? TV series, scribbled out PC games and apps. Another uh, nondescript folder, probably full of copied discs. Backup folder. Oh, always back up your PC, but maybe not on DVD or CD anymore. And getting low. What else? Oh, NBA action. That was definitely Tempe. If it's a game I don't care about, it would not have cost more than 50p because that was my budget. 
Yeah, I think these are my. Uh, I don't. Oh, look at that one. One ninety nine. I didn't pay that though. Oh, when a uh, game station came out, it's been overtaken by game now. They bought them all out. But what they used to do, they stuck these big stickers on the cardboard for the Saturn and the N64. And you get home, you try and take it off, and it takes half your game away with it. But um, yeah, I don't know what genius came up with that. Uh, Soviet strike. Yeah, these are. I definitely didn't pay much for these. Um, I probably paid more for this one. This was a good game, wasn't it? What else? Oh, Doom on the Saturn? Yeah. Nah, nothing special. This was a good game. Command and Conquer. Oh, no, that was a really good game. And um, Daytona USA. Daytona. Oh, trust it to finish on this. Unbelievable. I still have memories of this from uh, Montevideo. Well, that was the first box. And uh, check out how much is in one box. Oh, let's move that. All of that. We have a, we have a long way to go. I think the finds of this box are definitely Pokemon Blue. I don't care what anyone says, but the Dragon's Lair. And uh, there's some stuff over here. I think there's some super rare action replay action going on. Uh, as much as I like things like this, I don't think anyone cares. And uh, same, maybe same with that. Um, yeah, I think that's some of the finds anyway. Anyway, on with the next box. What do you think of the video? Should I make more? And should I open the other boxes? So here's our findings uh, from box one. Pretty exciting, isn't it? I don't even know what I have anymore. And there's the rest of box one that wouldn't physically fit on the bed. I think uh, these two are the, the gems of this lot. So, uh, not a bad box, was it? Not bad. Um, should I do box two? Um, I'm going to do a video for all of them anyway. I think there's about 12 boxes, give give or take. Um, but it's like a, a video memory, so you can kind of... Then I can kind of watch the video back later and remember, you know, all the memories associated with the things. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're just things, aren't they? So... Um, I'm going to sell everything, but it's nice to have a video memory. But if you want to see Box 2, etc., let me know below. And also let me know what do you think the best find out of Box 1 was. Um, was it Crypt Killer? Was it Knights? Was it the uh, construction kit for the Spectrum, I think it was? Let me know below. And uh, if you have any memories with those games and hardware that you've just seen, uh, let me know as well. Maybe uh, you fell out with your friend over one of the games, or maybe you met your future partner over one of them. So it'd be nice to know. Let me know below. And uh, again, yeah, let me know if you want to see box number two. Take care, and thank you for watching.